6,500 light years from Earth, in the direction of the core of the Milky Way galaxy, lies the realm of the Star Queen, a place far off in the depths of deep space with almost mythical connotations, where pillars that give birth to stars and planets rise from primordial cosmic dust like fingers of a chthonic god where creatures like winged dragons of black ash shadow seem to assault delicate towers fashioned out of the ether of space-time. One can almost hear the cry of the drake upon looking at it. The Star Queen's realm is also known as the Eagle Nebula, and it is, in fact, an open star cluster of some 8,100 stars surrounded by a vast cloud of nebulosity in every direction. The stars of this region are young as stars go, and the cluster itself believed to be no older than 2 million years and as little as 1 million, while some stars, only a few tens of thousands of years old, have just hatched from primordial eggs. EGG, or EGG, for echo, golf, golf, stands for evaporating gas globule, dark blotches of gas to be found in the pillars, and they hide the secret inner workings of developing stars. We'll see them soon enough, when we arrive there. Our star Sol would be found at the center of the blue circle in this image, and the Eagle Nebula would be found at the center of the red. And in the vast distances of space-time, it is not so far away. By contrast against the incredible void of space and the distances between galaxies, the Eagle Nebula is only a stone's throw distant. If you look ahead, you can see us coming upon it now. And as you can tell, it is an active region. We are just past the nebula to the left, and there are other open star clusters all around. If one were to use a high-quality telescope of low focal length and take an extended picture of the region around the Eagle Nebula, a vast cloud of gas would come into view. This is an active region where tides of gravity and the forces of newly born and newly dead stars have led to the collapse and condensation of the clouds in places. And it is this condensation and collapsing that leads to regions that become star birthing areas, otherwise known as stellar nurseries. And the most obvious of such areas is the vast cavern in the middle, the region from which this nebula receives one name, the Eagle, and from which it receives another, the Star Queen. Within the heart of the Eagle Nebula are the famous pillars of creation, the birthplace of stars. And if we study them across the broad range of the frequencies of light, it is as if we can peel back much of the dust and observe their secrets. The pillars are a melange of various gases and dust, and they have been shaped by the stellar winds blowing around them. And much of the wind comes from the stars birthed by this nebula. And in the infrared spectrum, we can see the bright red glow of a young star freshly hatched from one of the eggs mentioned earlier. The pillars themselves are as much as 5 light years tall, or over 45 trillion kilometers. Appearing to the upper right is a bipolar jet of gas, the sign of a newborn star with those plumes of gas speeding away at 200 kilometers per second. Denser gases at the crest of the pillar resist the erosion of the stellar winds. Nonetheless, over time the winds have their effect and slowly the pillars are eroding away. For, in the end, entropy always wins, to the point that it might accurately be said that the pillars are melting, fading away into a cosmic river, perhaps later to join another new star and become part of a new star system. And at the tip of the pillar, appearing to the right, now center screen, we can see the red lava-like emissions of another star, discharging hot material as the star enters early phases of coming to life. When we transform to the near-infrared spectrum, more detail of this amazing and beautiful structure is revealed. We gain a clearer picture of the wisps of gas being blown away from the structure of the pillars. Some, almost like vast tadpoles, a significant fraction of a light year in length. And at the peak of this pillar, we espy more stardust eroding away illuminated by the ionizing radiation of nearby stars, glowing like vast aurora, larger than entire star systems. And to the right in the central pillar, sometimes called the Dementor, we see the almost lava-like outflow of another young star yet embedded within a rich growing medium of stardust, 
Shifting our perspective to the visible spectrum as caught by the Hubble reveals more of the dust in the region, as we humans would perceive were we to have the privilege of standing so close to the pillars. And yet, for all the beauty of this range of the spectrum, it is also the most obscured. For in this range of the spectrum, we cannot peer into the pillars, nor make out much that is concealed by the curtain of dust behind the pillars. Transforming to a view of the pillars in the frequency of X-rays makes much of the structure invisible. However, the heart of the Eagle Nebula is an open star cluster, where newborn stars forged by the pillars of creation are revealed. Because, as it turns out, newborn stars announce their births with powerful emissions of X-rays. Some 8,100 stars owe their existence to this region of space, and there are many more yet to be created. Still in formation, deep within the pillars, hidden from view by columns of dust, light years high, and far, far larger around than many times the width and breadth of our entire solar system. And finally, if we layer all the frequencies of light over one another, the full and breathtaking scope of the Star Queen's realm is brought to life. For here, in this breathtaking place, we can see newly born stars and doubtless newly born worlds coming into existence, along with blazing, eroding streamers of dust like fiery aurora, an ocean of stellar wind breaking against the pillars, and dense dark clouds of dust, which are the eggs where young stars gestate in an albumen of dust and gas and scattered throughout in hues of red to blue, thousands of new stars, and beyond the Eagle Nebula, a vast cloud of dust concealing the center of the galaxy like a curtain drawn down upon secrets. From northern latitudes, the Eagle Nebula is visible often low in the southern sky, except during high summer when it may rise a bit higher. When it is visible, even if only for a brief time, it is bright enough that a relatively short exposure time can allow the Eagle Nebula to be captured in a photograph. However, the Star Queen's realm conceals many secrets. There are many shadows and corners within the Eagle Nebula of darker magnitudes, and revealing what may be seen beyond a momentary glance may require integration times of many hours. I captured this image of the Star Queen's realm over four exceedingly short nights of a northern summer and it represents a total of 12.75 hours of quality integration. Thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts on this target or experiences with it, or just something to add, please leave a message in the comment section below. And I hope you learned something that will enrich your time under the stars, and perhaps inspire you to take more time to get out there when the sun goes down and shoot the sky.